Now, the first step is to drag and drop these into the timeline. And we're going to focus on the image first. If you select it, you can press S for scale. And we're going to lower this down to something like, let's say, 15%. The next step is to also mute the audio from the video if you don't need the audio. Now, in order to create the base zoom effect, we need to, first of all, target the base itself. And we can achieve this by going into the effects and presets. And if you search for a low space, and then you will see a high low pass effect. You want to drag and drop this onto your music. And this will allow us to change the filter to a low pass. And you want to set the frequency to a low number of, let's say, 101. You want to try and keep the number as low as possible, but you may need to experiment with this because every song will be different. If we listen to this, it should sound like it's coming from underwater or on the ground. And if it does, then that is perfect. That is exactly what we want it to sound like. All we have to do is right click on the music, go up to keyframe assistant and convert audio to keyframes. This will give us a audio amplitude, which we can move all the way to the bottom. And we want to open this up, open up the effects, and since we don't really need the left and right channel, we can just go ahead and delete these two. You then want to open up both of these channels. And as you can see, you now have all of these keyframes plotted at the bottom. You can also preview this by clicking the graph view and then selecting the slider. And this will show you all of the low points and the peaks. Now at the moment, nothing will happen. These are just the keyframes. So in order to link the video with the audio and make it reactive, we need to left click on the video and press S for scale, hold Alt or Option key, and then left click on the stopwatch to get ourselves an expression box down below. We're going to delete the current line, and then you want to get the pick whip and drag this down to the slider. And this will link up the video with the audio amplitude and we can now left click off of this for the changes to apply. So as you can see at the moment, we have the screen pumps. However, they are really small. And the reason why this happens is because it will go from zero plus. In order to correct this, all we need to do is tell the expression by typing value plus in front of the temp. And this means it will go from 100 plus rather than from zero. Another expression that we can add is if we type in between the bracket and the semicolon, you can type in either a star sign or a slash sign. So let's say for example, you wanted this to be really reactive. You can type in star and then four, and this means times four. If you wanted it less reactive, you can type in slash four or five, and this means divide five. So you just need to experiment with this and see what works. But personally for me, I like it reactive. So I'm going to do a star sign and a two. You can then left click off of this and now you can have a look at it and see the beat will kick in and zoom in to the video. However, the only downside to this is that at the moment it's a little bit too choppy and a little bit too quick. So what we can do is we can go back to the slider and we can smooth in these keyframes down by left clicking on here. And then you want to hold Alt or Option key and left click on the stopwatch on the slider. And we want to type in smooth bracket 0.1 comma 21. And what this means is every second it will use 21 samples. The higher the second number, the smoother it will be. However, for this image, I found that 14 works really well. It's more of a in-between balance, in-between smooth and also reactive. But if we left click off of this and zoom in, you can see that the keyframes are now more smoother compared to before. Now that we've got ourselves the effect, we can go back onto the music. And since we don't really need the high and low pass filter, we can just delete this and remove it from here. The next thing to do is to apply some of the effects. Starting off with the first one is going to be a simple black and white effect. 
So if you search in for a black space and then you'll see a black and white effect, you want to drag and drop this onto your video layer. And for this one, we're going to change the tint to a black color. The next effect that we're going to apply is a brightness and contrast. So if you're searching for brightness, you can get yourself a brightness and contrast underneath this effect. For this one, we're just going to set the contrast to somewhere around, let's say 50. If you wanted to, you can also get yourself a reactive brightness. Every time the beat kicks in, it will get brighter. And to do this, it's really simple. All we need to do is hold Alt or Option key and then left click on the stopwatch to get ourselves an expression once again. Now for this one, we want to left click on the brightness and we're going to type in zero plus, which means it'll go from 0% plus and then drag the pick whip down to the slider. For this one, we're going to type in times two. So it's actually very noticeable. And then we can left click off of this. And if we have a look at this now, you can see it gets brighter as the beat kicks in. Another cool effect that we can get ourselves is a flicker effect. Now this one is once again optional, but I personally think it looks really cool. So if you wanted to add it in, you want to right click in the empty area, go up to new, and then get yourself a solid. We're going to rename this to flicker. Make sure that it's the same width and height as your video and set it to a black color. We can then go ahead and press OK. And you want to make sure that this one is above all of your layers. In order to create the flicker effect, we want to press T on our keyboard and you want to hold Alt and left click on the stopwatch once again. And we're going to type in wiggle bracket 15 comma 10. What this will do is it will make this layer randomly flicker through the percentage. So if you have a look at this, you can see the layer is flickering between 90 to 100. However, it's a little bit too aggressive at the moment. So to make this less aggressive, we can type in minus 90 at the end of it. And this will make it so it will only go from about zero up until about, let's say 25 and no more than that. So far, we've got ourselves a flicker effect, a brightness and contrast, and some other interesting effects. Now, the next one is to get ourselves a screen shake and we're going to apply it onto the video first. And in order to do this, we want to search for a wiggle and you'll see a wiggle position. You want to drag and drop this onto your video layer and then we can minimize the flicker. And with this one, we only need the position. With the wiggle position, you will have the seconds and the amount. Once again, we're going to hold Alt, left click on the stopwatch, and we're gonna start on the seconds first. With this one, we're going to type in zero plus. You want to drag this down to the slider. And for this one, we're going to do divide 14. You want to keep this number at a low number because if you have it really high, it starts to become way too shaky and it'll be very quick. So the easiest way to determine this is to add in the numbers and you want to start somewhere around six and work your way up. The higher the divide number, the lower the speed will be. Here's an example. If we apply this, you will see right now it's on zero. And as soon as it starts to kick in, once the P kicks in, it's only hitting 2.7. If we change this to a six and apply the changes, you can see it's now doubled in the speed. You want to keep this number anywhere between one to three. Any higher than that, it's way too quick. For the amount, we want to hold Alt, left click on the stopwatch for this one. And for this one, we're just going to type in zero plus, same as last time, drag this down to the slider. And for this one, we're just going to leave it as default. Now that we've got ourselves the wiggle effect on the video, we can now move on to the RGB split. To create the RGB split, we want to press Control or Command and D 
to get ourselves a copy of the video layer, you want to right click on this one and go to rename and we're going to call this R for the red channel. For this one, we want to first of all get ourselves a channel and then you'll see a channel mixer in the effects and presets and apply this onto your new video layer that you've just created. With this one, we also want to get rid of the brightness and contrast and also the black and white effect. On this one, we're going to focus on the red channel by removing the green. You can set this to zero and then set the blue on blue to zero as well. And this will give us a red channel. We also want to make this blend into the video and we can achieve this by toggling the modes at the bottom and set this to a litten effect. And this will blend in with the video. Now at the moment, this will be visible throughout the whole video and that is what we don't want it to do. We only want it to appear once the beat kicks in and the peaks start to rise. We can fix this by pressing T on our keyboard while selecting this layer, holding Alt, left click on the stopwatch, and for this expression, we're going to type in zero plus, drag this down to the slider, and we're going to do a times a at the end of it. You can then left click off of this, and if we have a look at this now, it'll go from 13 all the way up to 100 once the beat kicks in. We can then minimize this. You then want to go ahead and press Ctrl and D twice to get yourself two more copies of it. And with these ones, we're going to move it underneath the red channel. We're going to rename these ones to G and also B for the blue channel. We can simply modify these by left clicking on them. And then you want to go back onto the channel mixer. And for this one, we're going to get rid of the red channel and look at the green on green and set this one to 100. For the blue channel, we're going to once again get rid of the red and look for the blue on blue and set this to 100. If we preview this now and have a look at the video, And that is pretty much it. That is how you create this audio spectrum, which has the bass zoom, RGB split and screen shake effect.